because in the end, I wanted to be able to to heighten the feeling of what happens between the film and and the and the viewer. That that in between is that meeting. You know, again, this it's about human connection. So this lack of connection, where do we meet in the middle? You know. Hello, my name is Michael Stutz, and I'm the head of the Panorama section of the Berlin International Film Festival. And today, I'm very happy to welcome director Carlos Alfonso Corral with his film Dirty Feathers. Wonderful to have you here, and uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to have your film Dirty Feathers in the program. First question, maybe you could just briefly describe your film in a few sentences. Uh, the film's about endurance and strength, faith, uh, love, the lack of love and human connection. Let's do this. Out with the old, in with the new. True statement. And everywhere I go, not just in El Paso, but everywhere I go, you always see the the homeless, and it's like, um, yeah, this interested me very much as to try to connect with them and share uh, presence basically gaining presence with them. And uh, so I went to the shelter first and I wanted to see how how the people live in this system that they've built for them. But um, yeah, I first started just trying to cast in that sense, uh, even the social workers and um, the intakes. And after a while, uh, I just kept going, revisiting and speaking with uh, several characters and after a while, uh, Brandon, the main protagonist, he saw me going and going. And finally, he saw me with a still camera taking pictures, trying to cast. And he told me, he's like, hey, uh, I think I know what you're trying to, to do here. Maybe we could do something together. So it was very collaborative from the start. Like he had ideas. He wanted to uh, take me into his, his world and show me around. And that's when I kind of stepped outside of the center and started just being with with them outside because they were barred from the shelter. He wasn't allowed to go in. Actual shooting was just uh, 11 days. But, wow. um, yeah. And um, it, yeah, it's kind of bizarre how how like it just naturally fell into place. Everything Brandon and Ashley and everyone was just so collaborative. They had so many ideas as well. And um, yeah, it came so natural. But in the end, I guess, yeah, like Five weeks in total. Structure mm -hmm. of the restaurant, mm -hmm. the menu of the restaurant, mm -hmm. the prices, mm -hmm. uh, the employees. Uh, it's, it's not like we ain't done our homework on yeah. this. It ain't like mm -hmm. we just came up with the, hey, we want to be a restaurant owner. No, mm -hmm. we done did our homework. We done did some research. We done got menus. We pricing things. Mm -hmm. It just ain't like this just popped up. This is a dream. We can have something good for them, bro. I know we ain't going to live forever. I don't know when my heart going to stop. Heart problems running my heart, my you know family. I don't know when I'm gonna have a heart attack. I know it's gonna come. I don't know when it's gonna, but when it do, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be able to leave something, yeah. You know, or show something. I don't care if it if it does shut down. Hey, that's 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 yeah. Anything to get you? Yeah, let me get that one. Yeah, yeah, let me get that one. I mean, technically, we decided to to shoot only with one lens in the sense of uh, not having to worry about um, changing lenses and you know worrying too much about technicality. It had to be like immediate. Yeah. There's a yeah this immediacy, and uh, as far as angles, we just decided to stay as close as possible to create this intimacy and to. To show that, yeah, that they've welcomed us and we're not, uh, you know, from afar, you know, zooming in and, and peeking into the, trying to get away with shots or anything like if we were welcomed, then we can shoot. If we weren't, then we would just, you know, listen and stand by. I mean, had we been there with like a, a, an actual sound and like production, I think we, yeah, people would have shied away. The intimacy wouldn't have been there and 
possibly i don't know probably get robbed or something because it was pretty volatile the the neighborhood it wasn't it wasn't always friendly and yeah. so open. but brandon uh since he's been there for a while he had our back and he he would step in sometimes when people okay. would get in too close the um decision to shoot in black and white was it there from the beginning Yeah, 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 and there was also many reasons as to why in black and white, but I think the main one was I didn't want to add any, uh, I didn't want to endow any superficial meaning with color. Yes. And, yeah, and since they live in such extremes, you know, everyday life, uh, not knowing if they will eat it, or, you know, this light and darkness uh, just made sense and seemed to amplify their journey this emotional journey and it also made it seem to where i'd like to think that it made it seem to where um this landscape becomes one with the characters and it's not distinguished you know separating each character i i wanted to show the resemblances of of everybody yeah, i definitely didn't uh uh want to focus on any desperation because i think that's quite vivid when anyone walks by uh homeless um, so yeah, definitely I was interested. And again, because I thought it would fall more into journalism. I started thinking of statistics and this more social commentary. I, I, I wanted to dignify them by giving them, uh, allowing their presence to really unfold and uh, be interested in, yeah, their hopes, their dreams, their passions. Mm. Daddy loves you. Love you. Eyes and ears open, mouth closed. Pay attention to everything in life, man. You never know what you'll hear and see. You never know. You never know. But things I couldn't give you no advice, I had things I had to show you. I can't just tell you. I had to show you things. How things work in life. How to treat somebody, how to love somebody. How to do certain things in life. Uh, mm. Man, hope the soul food stuff really, really work out. Mm. New life, new life, new life. It's a trip, man. Hopefully we won't be out here for long. Something's gonna work out. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Mm. It's gonna be all right. I don't know when you go back to El Paso because you grew up there. Um, yeah. So do you still have sort of a connection with the people that you shot with, with Brandon and so on and so forth? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, recently I went back to El Paso and I showed him the film. Um, unfortunately, there was some, like I was telling earlier, um, someone else uh, that a part of me didn't want to find them again because I wanted to, to kind of hope that they made it out of that reality. Yes. But unfortunately, um, I went back and yeah, Brandon was still in the same spot and uh, Ashley as well. Ashley has a baby kid and um, yeah, she has a little baby boy and uh, Reagan is in jail and um, they had the kid, they had the, the, the child and it was in healthy conditions, but the CPS, the Child Protective Services took the kid away. And uh, the, the character who opens the film, he yes. passed away. Uh, oh. Yeah, five months ago. So yeah, it was it was re it's really tragic and sad that 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 it came back to that. But yeah, I, um, I, I'm in contact with Ashley. I have her her number, and uh, I showed her some of this stuff too. And they're they're all happy. They they're they love the music and the way <laughs> that they're shot. <laughs> um, thank you so much for your time. And thank, uh, you. thank you. Take care, and uh, I'll see you soon. Hopefully. Ciao. Bye bye.